Let's see what happens when we put the disc in. Well, I can wait for a long time, but I don't think there's any auto install going to take place. Now, the normal thing for a Windows program is to press install. And when we press install, we get these options here, one, two, three, four, and five, and we find that they're media files, which probably means that they are videos of some sort, but let's have a click. And sure enough, we have a Chinese guy that's um, beginning to show us how to install bits and pieces on the machine. There we go, he's taking the stuff out of the, uh, the pack. Well, we certainly don't need that. Quick look at five. Oh, well, we've got through to doing some cutting on the machine of some sort. So at the moment, we don't need that either. We're trying to get the software installed. So this is obviously not the right route to go down. So we better go to RD Works. That looks like an application which we will run. So I think we're installing the program now. Now it looks as though we've got to install the USB driver to allow us to uh, input programs via the USB port. I think we better choose English as a language. We'll click on that. I think we're going to click on install. So we'll have to assume that we've got it on and working. Let's go and have a check. See where it's popped it. Ah, there it is. So let's open RD Works and see what happens. Hmm, well that's useful. We've got something. Um, I'm going to try and import a DXF file. Ah, and there we are. We have a DXF file which has come in exactly as expected. So, I suppose that's some sort of success at the moment. We've managed to import a drawing. I haven't found out how to use the software yet, but we can do that later. Whilst away on holiday, I managed to do a little bit of um, learning about this software. It's not as good as my current CAD software, but it's okay. It works. It's a little bit clunky and there aren't that many features on it, but enough to do most bits and pieces. Um, where do we start? Oh yes, the first thing to do is to go to the configuration menu at the top there, config, and go to page setting and set the page up for your particular uh, machine. So the, I know that the uh, the work area for this machine is 500 millimeters, which is already set there, by 300 millimeters. Now I've not changed any of these other features except the grid space. I've put grid on as opposed to grid off and I've set my grid spacing to 10 millimeters which is what you see in the background there but I've not attached any of these other um, these other dimensions here these look like keyboard um, movements so if you press the keyboard maybe you jump one millimeter at a time um, maybe it's a sort of additional grid but uh, I can't say so that's what we've done so now we've got a uh, a work area shown on the screen to match the work area of my machine. Uh, let's take a simple example of a square. So we put a square and we put it where we want to start approximately and let's start at the top corner there somewhere shall we and then we just put the left mouse button down and drag it normal windows way until we get something that looks like a square. Now we could try and guess it as I've seen some people do by using the rulers but you can get a very accurate dimension by going up to the top left corner here you'll see that there's two dimension boxes called X and Y I'll explain those in a minute and next to those there are two other boxes well there's a horizontal arrow by that box so if we touch the line click on the line of this rectangle the corner doesn't seem to do anything all right, but if we click on the on somewhere on the black line, we will get the handles on the box, 
and as soon as the handles go on the box you'll notice that these dimensions have changed and they've become black instead of grey. Now this is obviously a horizontal dimension, at the moment it says it's 121. So let, let's set that to 100. So we wipe it from left to right and we'll do 100 and you'll see the box change when I press enter. And then we'll make the other dimension 100 also. So again we'll start on the left of the, of the numbers, push the mouse button down and wipe it across to the right and then we'll type in the number that we want which is 100 and there we are so we've now got exactly 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters square and right in the middle of it we've got a an X now if I move the X around as I can do and move it to a new position you'll notice the X and Y here change so these two boxes here are the center position of any figure that you put on there. So let's move those to 300. So again, start from the left and wipe it right, and we'll make that into 300. And we'll go on the y axis 99. So we make that into 100, 100. So that's now, if we look, we'll see that it's on the exactly on the 300 coordinate and on the 100 coordinate so we know exactly where that is we'll now do something similar we'll go in with a circle and we'll pull a circle out and if I don't do anything with that circle I can make it into a um, an ellipse of some sort right but if I press the control button down look what happens now I push the control button it turns it into a circle so Keep the control button down and let go of your mouse button and it will remain as a circle. Now we can touch on it, put the handles around there and we can go and size the circle. At the moment it shows as 71 by 71. Now just beside here we've got a lock, a padlock. Now at the moment the padlock is unlocked so I would guess that if I change one of those dimensions I would get back to an ellipse. So what I'm going to do is to close the lock and then I'm going to change just one of these dimensions, it doesn't matter which. So we sweep that across there and we'll make it into 50, say. And both dimensions will change to 50. OK, now... Now if I want this circle to line up perfectly in the middle of this, what I've got to do is to remember what the coordinates are for the centre of this and they happen to be 300 by 100. So if I go back and mark this one up and set these to 300, let's do the same thing again, look, 300, enter, by 100, 100, enter, and now we've got the circle right in the middle of the square. Okay, now at this very moment in time, what we've got is one layer which is black. Now, if, for example, we wanted the circle to be engraved and then cut out with a square, what we'd have to do is to add another layer. Well, we don't actually add another layer because what we can do, we can just pick up one of these layers. Let's choose the outside one, the outside shape, and let's choose it to be a red layer. It doesn't matter what color it is, but it's a red layer. OK, so now we've got two separate features on there. The first one is the circle which we will double click on the black and what we now get is a set of cutting parameters come up. So we're on the black layer which is the circle. The out, it says is output speed. Well we're going to etch this so I would suggest we could probably leave that at 100 millimeters a second but I've got no experience to go by at the moment. If blowing we've got we're going to have our gas on we're going to have the uh, the air blowing and the process mode so we can click on there and see what the options are we've got scan cut and dot now I suspect that cat cut will be cutting right through and scan will probably be engraving so we'll set that to scan and then we've got minimum maximum power depending how deep we want to scan and what the material is um, I suspect that probably 20 and 30 are good values and we have got here a second laser head number two which is not 
available on this machine. We don't have a second laser head so we can ignore that. Now I've not touched any of these features down here. Um, and I'm not going to at the moment because I don't understand them. So we shall leave that and we just say OK. And then we'll go to the red layer and we'll double click that, click, click. And we want an output, yes. Speed, well bear in mind we're going to cut this time rather than um, etch. So I suspect the speed is going to be a lot lower. It gives me 10, I think I'll accept 10 at the moment. If blowing, yes. Process mode, it's already given me cut. Okay, so and again we've only got one layer selected and it's told me that the minimum power is going to be 80% and the maximum power is going to be 95%. I did read somewhere it's not recommended to go above 95%. Um, I've got no idea what this is. Seal, open delay, close delay, through power 95%. We should leave all those alone and say OK. Right. So now we've set this thing up ready for cutting and we look at these other options. We've got output, a quick scan through the output features tells me that it doesn't look as though there's anything there that I should be changing at the moment. Document, doesn't mean anything. User, they may well be user profiles for things I'm doing, I don't know. Test, looks as though that's a copy of the machine um, control buttons if I wish to connect this computer up to the machine via the PC port and transform. No, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to mirror it, move it, change it, grid it at the moment. Um, this is a, a symmetrical feature, so or, <laughs> this drawing is symmetrical, so I won't know whether it's inside out, back to front or upside down. Um, that's something I'll test out later because at the moment you'll notice up in this corner here I've got my coordinate 0, 0 which is where I think the machine is parked up in that corner um, so and I think probably I have the ability to move that zero point to any one of the other corners if I want so we've tested all these tabs at the top here and can't see anything outside what we do need to do for work um, now the only question is looking at this I need to make sure that I do a scan cut before I do a cut cut, if you see what I mean. I don't want to cut this square out first and then try and um, etch it afterwards. So you have to make sure that these layers are in the correct order. And at the moment they are, we're going to scan first and then we're going to cut second. Right, if we were connected to the machine, we could probably control directly from the machine, from here, to control the machine. But as we're not, we shall have to probably save to a U file. Kingston and laser output files. And I'm going to put another test on there, which we'll call square test. Okay. Now, I don't know what that means. A warning sign of some sort. Maybe it's because we're not connected up to the machine at the moment. Um, this program and this computer have not been near the machine because I haven't set the machine up yet. So we'll have to find out what this means as time goes on. But at the moment we'll say OK and I'll just go and check whether or not this file has been saved anywhere. So we'll just go to here, output files, and there we go, square test RD. It's an RD file. It's got eight kilobytes, so it's got some size to it. It's not an empty file that's failed to save. So we shall have to wait and see. Uh, I believe we can put a marquee square around the whole lot like that and probably press delete and everything will disappear. So that's about as far as I'm going to go at the moment. All the other controls along here you can fiddle with. We're going to have to move to the machine and set the machine up before we can try doing anything with these silly little programs.